look into the sky and you see the object falling down to earth. You see the mushroom cloud. Roll for saves. Oh, that one's a little bleak, wasn't it? Um, this is Roll for Saves episode 7, I believe. Uh, today we are uh, going to continue our story with Jafing. The last episode, episode 6, we had Jafing um, <clears throat> inducted into the Blade Archivists. And during their initial meeting, uh, they were trying to figure out some artifacts that they had uh, acquired. And Jafing had his fingers crushed. So what we're going to do today is um, we're going to do some bookkeeping just to see how it works. Um, and just a note for myself, I do have noise suppression off just to see uh just to see if it is as clipped as it was a couple episodes ago so I'm, I'm trying something new with the audio settings hopefully it won't be so clipped and hopefully the keyboard sounds and such will not be too loud excuse me while i open my water okay so um bookkeeping what we want to do is um i'm just going to for the sake of testing, as I said, this is a beta test. So for the sake of testing, I'm going to uh, manually track Jfing's healing and then track um, track the trying to figure out the artifacts that the Blade Archivist have. So I'm going to open up the dice tray. I'm going to move this one over a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to get a new sticky tab to write all this information in. Come on. There it goes. All right. Owlbear Rodeo is a little slow sometimes. So we want, um, we're going to check how many days it takes. So Jafing's healings. Uh, I hate this sometimes down here. Okay. Where's my cursor? There it is. Do, 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 do. All right, next line, Jafing's healing. Um, so I'm gonna say Jafing has a, uh, what do you call it? A healer, someone that they can visit once in a while to attempt to get some healing. Um, someone in town, kind of like, probably like a free clinic or something. And so I'm gonna roll a D6 and just see how many days it takes to get healed up. Uh, should be on average three or four days. So rolls the first time and gets a one. So uh, that doesn't work well. I'm going to do it over here then. Okay. I was trying to make it larger by putting it on the uh, Alvar Rodeo, but it loses my cursor as I go back and forth. All right. So that's a one. Got one healing for the first day. And I'm going to give the archivists uh, chances to figure out some of the artifacts. Um, so I'm going to see if uh, Jafing figures out artifact. I believe we gave Jafing a D8. Um, it's not nautical. It's a tuner study. And nothing would make it easy. So I'm just going to say D8. That's a four. All right. So um, I'm going to say it's going to take uh, 10 points. Uh, I know what I'll do. I'll do it this way. Excuse me a second. I should have figured out how I wanted to work this out before I started the stream. All right, and back to brush. Let's do brush. I hate how light the brush comes up on this one. Disable blending. Maybe this one. All right, so uh, that's four. Yeah, that looks nice. So I'm going to say four out of, uh, let's say these are simple artifacts. They require 10. All right, so Jafing has four out of 10 to figure out an artifact. Uh, second day, roll for healing, clear six. That's just two for healing, so that's a total of three. And let's try to work on the artifact. We get another four, all right. So that's gonna be eight on the healing. And then let's do the third day. Okay, that's six. 
and then figuring out the artifact. The artifact should be figured out this time. That's a three, yes. All right, so that's 11 total. Um, so the artifacts figured out. Um, let's go ahead and roll a random artifact. Do, 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 do. This I can do this under uh, Magic Creator. Okay, so we have ten spells: uh, animate, bless, charm, communicate, create, damage, move, obscure, protect, summon. And I'm gonna roll a D10, see which one of these spells the artifact accesses. Number three is a charm. So this will, um, oh, charm was changed to invoke. Um, and what it does, that, what that means is it invokes an emotion in something. So it's not just charm as in making something friendly. So um, this could cause fear. This could make something calm. It could make someone feel affection. It could make someone, um, I don't know, basic emotions, right? Uh, feel humorous. Right, um, so we got a three, we got invoke. I'm gonna make a note here. Invoke, and what does it look like? Um, I'm gonna get, use a sign to determine what it looks like. That's a D12. Uh, I got an eight here. That is a helm. I don't know what I got, Di D Died, dead, died, injury, did, died. I don't know what I was trying to write there. I was wrote injury by accident on top of it. Died. Maybe I should be dead. Okay. Um. All right. So we got helm. So this is a helmet you put on, and it invokes an emotion into something else. Um, what emotion is it going to invoke? Uh, let's say we have a, a, a sadness. I'm going to move away my, this one. So let's say we have sadness, um, happiness, and sadness, happiness, and anger. A fear. A want or a, a disgust. I think that would be a good array of items to pick from. So that looks like a D6. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. D6. Two. Okay. Uh, two, 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 two is happiness. So he wears this helmet and it makes a happiness. Um, We'll say it make like a makes a, 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 a kind of like a charm spell makes right. You wear it and people are kind of happy, um, boisterous, consort, uh, you know, kind of like a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not cavort. That's not the right word. Like you're sitting in a bar, everyone's happy, everyone's toasting each other, just having a great time. That's what it's like. So. That's what this helm helps people do. Um, so it's a helm of happiness. Uh, so I'm gonna put this as an artifact the blade archivist have. And this one clear here. All right. So Helm of Happiness. So anyone can wear it and use their own personal magic dice to power this helm. That's the way magic's working right now in this setting. Okay, so we have that one. Now let's do, um, we need to do another day of healing. So that's a D6. Two. Oh, it's taken him a long time to heal. So that's five days and then... <laughs> Okay, so we got six, that was it, six, seven, eight, that's nine. One more day of healing. There, that, that'll put them up for healing. Um, so that go, that was how many days? Five, six, seven days, seven days, a full week to heal. 
and he's not fully healed. Um, so what that'll do, that'll move the broken finger down one level. And because he filled up his healing clock, he can re-roll his um, grit, his base grit, with a, oh, what was it? D, D6, D8, D10, D12. So with the D6, D8, with the D8, um, so he has a chance to, 50% chance to get higher than what he has now. No, he has a three. So his grit's gonna remain the same. He doesn't have to drop it down. Um, I did originally have the rule where you just have to take the new new roll, but I realized the other day actually when he took this broken finger that if he had a D8 here and he rolled an eight and then he healed this one down to nothing and he rolls a D6 and he rolls a six, like no matter what he rolls, he's gonna do worse. So that will make a character say, oh, I don't want to be healed. And they would try to avoid it. So I did not want to do that. Um, all right, so uh, that clears his healing clock and he's gonna be healed again. That's a five. Uh, try to do the next item. That's a six. Uh, is there a way to clear all of the writing together? Clear, erase all, there, all right. I'm gonna put healing up top. Now that I figured out how to write well here, five and six, we'll say the next artifact is gonna be of 20, all right? Um, all right, and then roll them again. Oh, that was close. All right, so that's a, that's a three for a total of nine. That's a one for a total of six. Roll them again. That's an eight. All right, um, so nine plus eight is gonna be 17. Pretty good. And a four on this one. That is enough to heal the last broken finger. So that was one, two, three days. So it took him a total of 10 days to get over a broken finger. It's just a game. I think that takes long enough. Um, and because this one was low level, I should put the dice out there. Um, it's just gonna take them a D6, gives them a D6 to reroll their grit. Five, all right, we got a plus one grit. That will move the total defense up to a seven. Okay, and then, um, oh, let's roll one more day maybe to uh, finish up the, the, the attuning the magic item. That's a six, that does it. All right, so they got the second magic item. And this one is another spell. Let's do clear. It was, a, it was a D10 and D12 for the item. So that's a seven, which is uh, three, seven, all right? Two, four, six, seven, move. Moving, all right, um, and it's 12, it's a cup. Hmm. All right, so moving could be um, something that makes you faster. It could be teleporting, it could be giving giving you temporary uh, wings or like a super jump ability, something like that. Um, but this is a cup, which is a receptacle. So what I'm gonna say, this one is a pair of, um, it doesn't have to actually be a cup, right? So I'm just going, going for a vessel, um, which I guess I can change the word to a vessel. better um so this one I'm gonna say is a pair of bowls fairly large bowls maybe hold about a gallon each and when you when there's something that's in the bowl when you dump it out is that what I want hmm yeah, when you dump it out of the bowl, it appears in the other bowl. And then if you just pick it up and take it out, it's okay. No, because that means you're always gonna get water sloshing back and forth between the two. Um, 
okay when you put something into a bowl it appears in the other bowl that's what it is so it's just going to be uh, when you drop it into the bowl it appears in the other bowl so that bowl always looks empty so if you're just like if you put the water under a running faucet and the bowl starts running the the bowl under the faucet would look like the water is just going through it but the other bowl will eventually start to overflow um, wherever it is so I'm going to say the bowls of transfer. So I'm going to call those. Let's put that in here. And they hold about one gallon. And that'd be about uh, three and three quarters liters if I have my conversions right in my head. Um, all right, so we have a helmet happiness and bowls of transfer. And they're still working on the other items. I'm just going to roll what they are. We got a 10 and a 9. Okay. 10 and a 9. So we have... Summon. That's nice. Summon. And what shape is it? It looks like an abyss. Um... Okay, this one is like the old uh, Looney Tunes cartoons uh, when they'd have like the hole that they'd pick up the hole and fold up the hole, right? It's like that. Um, it appears as a, a the blackest black, like a Vanta black uh, cloth. And so like looking at it kind of hurts your eyes because you know you expect a little highlight you expect something to suggest you know what is closer to you what's far away from you even if it's a black color but what happens is this one um it's a black cloth and probably like uh, elliptical shape not exactly circle kind of an oval um and what happens is it, when you put it on the put it on a surface and reach into it you can clasp and you grab a hand and when you pull your hand out you you're pulling out a basically a shade and that's what it's going to be so it's going to be a portable hole Summon shade. Oh. And if you just drop anything down the hole, it's gone. And it's only a hole if you lay it out perfectly flat. Right? So if you, if you put it down and kind of like have it scrunched up or wrinkly or something, it's not a hole. Only when you smooth it out flat does it become a hole. It kind of like locks in a place. So uh, skip a line. Let's do I'm gonna put a little dashy here. So uh silken hole summon shade and a little little hyphen at the front just so I know this is the next item okay and I can delete three artifacts so these are three items that the the blade archivists have on hand they can figure out how to use somehow um they're not terribly powerful oh, probably the most powerful one would be the helm of happiness or the silken hole and but they're not like super super overpowering and this is a shorter episode it's starting to get noisy outside so it's a good place as any for me to pause uh, for more information, check out the blog at blogspot.com or patreon.com. Uh, this is a podcast and a YouTube video, so you can check out whichever one you prefer. Um, play games and have fun. <laughs>